video I've been wanting to do this for a while actually because I'm quite a child I've got a coffee here this is a filter I did earlier but here we have the trusted Bialetti and we have some rather old because I bought this a while ago uh, organic espresso from Monmouth and we can see it is a medium dark and we can see that it is made for stovetop and we can see that the seal has not been broken so let's break that and uh, have a little smell see if it's lost anything because this is older than I would normally want to use it's lost a lot so we may not get one of the things that's amazing is you can spend a lot of money on coffee and a lot of people do spend a lot of money on coffee but I tell most of them that it's a complete waste of time because if it doesn't smell as good as this Monmouth coffee smells when you take it out of the um, shop and even you know I get it delivered now because the one in the good old days two decades ago three decades ago when I used to go to their shop and you'd see the likes of Elton John and Stig sort of chilling out there it was a very calm and serene place with little wooden areas that were sort of you know nobody would if you're famous you could go and sit over here and if you're some little runty students like us talking rubbish about the life then about life sorry we then we'd be sat over here and I would usually just ask them for what's the best you know what's the freshest roast because I love that fresh smell now I get it all online because it is you know you have to queue and then even when you get in you can't even ask a question you know you feel like you know, there's 10 people behind you so you just basically say I love this this and this so what I do is I, I monitor online what's coming in and what's not and I get the freshest by looking at that and sadly this is not the freshest but what is amazing is the box arrives and it's in your hall it's in your kitchen everybody knows there's coffee somewhere they go what's that smell and when you open it up in your kitchen, I mean, your whole kitchen just smells of coffee, which is wonderful. It's what I like. It's, I, I really do love coffee. And honestly, if, I don't care how much you're spending, but if your coffee doesn't do that, and I'm not saying that there are no other coffees other than Monmouth, that obviously will be. But if someone is not roasting, bringing the coffee in and roasting it and, you know, distributing it here in London with so many people as a captive audience, then don't waste your time. Um, so... Let's see, I don't know how much of a, of this coffee gets older, it kind of, it doesn't have the most amazing effect. Uh, you know, usually the freshest coffee, I don't know if it's all in the mind, um, but generally, I mean, obviously the, the coffee sort of making the, um, we're using its sulfurants, the, the foaming agents to, to, to make a, um, a crema is something that, you know, should always be there, but I've always found that the fresher the coffee, the more you'll get, on which point, there's a lovely um, light roast um, Bolivian that they have. So let's get to it. We are going to get, I didn't bring my spoon and I know, and I obviously don't have anything to measure this with. And I have a mucky table. So we won't, uh, we won't put anything in there. And I didn't bring any water, which is pathetic. But let's just get the coffee in. So one trick that I do do, because we've all put one of these on the fire without anything in it, the planes are back, is I prepare my coffee here. Never prepare it there. Because if you prepare it in your water chamber without water in it, there is a chance that you will put it on the gas without water. Um, especially if you're sleepy in the morning. If it's your first coffee, you have no chance. So, yeah, I'm just tamping this down. It's not really tamping, is it? I'm just, uh, I'm not using a tamp or a tamper or anything of that name. Leave it. This has been maturing in uh, Shez Borman for a while, but, uh, yeah, I better get some water. 
But let's get some water. And I've got a surprise for you because this one I am doing on the wood burning stove in my new man shed, which yeah, it needs still needs some work, but it's it's getting there. So let's get a fire started, and let's get some water, obviously, and see how amazing it is to make coffee on a wood burning stove in a man shed. It's probably going to be quite nice. I imagine it would be quite nice. I managed to get myself some water, because I'm clever like this. And what I do have here is some water that I microwaved for a little bit. Because one of my viewers, subscribers, pointed out that um, so some people put hot water in here, which I don't like, because I don't really like burning myself. But uh, you know, using boiling hot water and trying to hold it with a towel and everything in the morning is a recipe for disaster. And I don't like boiling, boiling water because I have seen some horrific, horrific burns in, especially in children, which yeah, basically means for me, I don't have a kettle in the house. I know it's a bit extreme. I, it's not because I'm extreme. I don't want a kettle in the house. It's just that I don't need a kettle for anything. But so long story short, God, he does go on sometimes. What I do, following uh, what uh, one of my viewers said, and I'll put the name sort of down here, because um, my memory is not what it used to be. I can't remember somebody who made a comment on a video a year ago, um, but I should, because it's a very good piece of advice. So what I do is, let's get rid of that cup. What I do is uh, put this, so as you know, my sort of recipe for this water at uh, room temperature in the UK, 200 milliliters, two minutes in my microwave oven, gets it to 80 degrees. And I can tell if it's more or less there just by the, you know, it, it's starting to bubble. But uh, he or she, I think it's he, said do it at uh, 60 degrees or something like that, which is very easy to hold. So the reason you use metal when, uh, you know, baristas use metal when they're uh, steaming the coffee is because uh, around 60 degrees is where you don't want to go above because it starts breaking the milk down, the oils in the milk down. But it's also, it's very easy to tell when you're using metal because it's kind of the limit of what you want to hold. So yeah, I put this in for just one minute, which as you can see, or may not be able to see, but there is a little bit of steam coming off on there. I can see that is up to the valve. And so we are ready to put this together and finally get the fire started because that's what we all like really isn't it a good fire now you can see I can kind of hold that and I can screw it together I mean I can tell it's warm but I can hold it perfectly screw it together it's a temperature that is kind of yeah I mean you wouldn't want to hold hard for too long but there we go it's enough to get the, so the concept is, is that if that's hotter, it goes through quicker and doesn't scald the coffee uh, whilst it's dry in here. Uh, I just like it yeah, a little bit warmer, I find it comes through quicker without burning you, etc. Uh, I can't say there's a huge difference. I mean, I always keep my coffee on a low heat anyway. It's a lot harder to control the wood burning stove, so it is probably better to put hotter water in. Now, obviously what I could do if I was doing this more often, and I probably will do, I'm not sure if I can put a Pyrex, I probably can, but uh, warm the water first, uh, just because it's very hard to control the heat of a wood burning stove. I have had everything in here from 30 degrees to sort of 20s. Um, I'm getting better at it. Uh, I had a longer chimney and then a shorter chimney and that changes it a lot as well. Um, let's not go there. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it isn't the easiest thing to control.
take it off. And there we have a wonderful, magnificent cup of espresso.